Hi, my name is Russell Hood and I am standing here in the warehouse of the 109th Air National Guard Unit's uh, facility in Kangalushwak, Greenland. I'm here as part of the Polar Trek program and as a teacher I am getting to join NASA's Operation Ice Bridge which are doing uh, missions that fly over the ice cap of Greenland and measuring uh, the altitude and the depth of the ice all across the island. Joining me today is John Sontag, who's also with Operation Ice Bridge. He's the navigator and the chief meteorologist for the program. And today we're going to talk about the catabatic winds of Greenland. Okay, to understand catabatic winds, it's good to, uh, to cut Greenland in a cross section. So imagine a vertical profile of Greenland, which is uh, sort of depicted here in a crude drawing. Here we've taken an east-west slice, a vertical slice through Greenland, and, and an important thing to understand about Greenland, it is, it is basically a colossal mountain of solid ice, reaching up to over 10,000 feet tall and thick, also in the center here. So one thing that happens in Greenland, uh, a very common situation, is you get stable air over the center of the ice cap. Uh, stable air, high, relatively high pressure, the air sits there for a long amount of time, and that's depicted here. So you have, you have air that's in contact with this huge amount of ice, uh, and, and the transfer heat between the two, the air, the, air, the, the, the energy from the air, the temperature of the air tends to warm up the ice and vice versa. The, uh, the cold ice tends to cool off the air. And when the air gets cold, it gets dense. And when it gets dense, it wants to start rolling down these big 10,000 foot hills on both sides. And depending on the weather, the weather setup, the, we the, the certain types of weather around the coast can either prevent that or enhance that effect. And we'll see that in the next frame. Okay, we had been looking at Greenland in cross-section, now we're going to look at a map of Greenland, a rather crude map in this particular case. Um, and remember, we had the, uh, the cold air sitting up here at the top of Greenland, uh, getting, getting super cool and getting dense. And when it does that, of course, it wants to uh, obey gravity and start rolling downhill. But the surrounding weather uh, around the island will affect, um, will affect which direction the flow goes. And uh, it, the, the surrounding weather systems can act like on and off valves that control that flow. And that's depicted here around the southern part of Greenland. You have a, a low pressure system here on the southeast, which is very common. That's called the Icelandic Low. It sits there most of the year. Uh, and a high pressure system in this particular case sitting in the southwest. Now, because we're in the northern hemisphere, uh, the Coriolis effect says that low pressure systems rotate counterclockwise in the manner depicted here. And high pressure systems, the air around them, rotates clockwise. So if you are a super cool parcel of air up sitting at this part of Greenland and you want to start going downhill, you're not going to go this direction because the winds are pushing against you. But in this direction, the winds are going to suck you right down the hill. And in addition to your own weight going down the hill, the wind is going to add to that and create a very strong flow down the hill. And what happens in that particular case is the air that started out very cool uh, and still up at the top gains a lot of speed. It, actually, it can actually uh, reach an excess of over 200 miles per hour. That's been uh, documented in parts of Greenland. A more common speed is less than 100 miles per hour, 50 to 70 miles per hour is fairly common uh, in this part of Greenland. So the, the, uh, the wind will blow down the hill and as the, uh, as the air moves down the hill, it'll also warm up. So by the time it gets down to the ocean, it's actually quite warm and uh, can, can raise the temperature of the coastal communities down there. Uh, but another thing it does is it impinges on these coastal mountains that are, that are common down here. And when Operation Ice Bridge is flying amongst those mountains, because we, remember we have to fly quite low, uh, we get involved in the way in which the wind interacts with those mountains. And those very strong winds can create a great deal of turbulence in those mountains. And that's a situation that we try to avoid.